So, you've been invited to a potluck. Or maybe you wanted to be in charge of the turkey this year, but your family asked you to bring forks and napkins instead. But you're not giving up that easy. Let me show you how to win your Thanksgiving potluck with this turkey dinner in a bite appetizer. Get all your pots and pans out because this one gets kind of busy. Kick off the cranberry sauce with a half cup of water, half a cup of pulpless orange juice, and when it's simmering, half a cup of sugar. I'm using agave nectar for a bit of extra flavor, but a mix of white and or brown is fine. Stir until the sugar dissolves, then add in three cups of cranberries, fresh or frozen. You can also add a dash of allspice, nutmeg, and or cinnamon for some punch. We need 15 to 20 minutes for the cranberries to burst. You can help stab the stubborn ones. Then it's off to cool for 30 minutes on the counter, and then at least an hour in the fridge to firm up. We'll need croutons. If you need gluten-free and you can't find them in stores, six loaves of chopped gluten-free bread should get you about two cups of celiac-friendly croutons. Cube and leave in the oven on the lowest temperature for about two hours. We'll need to dice a tablespoon's worth of fresh sage, a tablespoon of rosemary, another tablespoon of mint, the same for parsley. Pick off a tablespoon's worth of fresh thyme. This is my least favorite herb and I can see why most recipes call for just throwing the whole twig in, but we can't get away with that, so pick away. Then mince two cloves of garlic. Get a quarter cup of butter in a pan, otherwise known as a fistful. I'm using a non-stick for reasons you'll soon see, but if you're using an extra stick pan, add a bit more butter to compensate for what gets sucked into the metal. Fry off your garlic for a bit, then add your diced herbs. Stir around for a minute or until your house smells like Thanksgiving, then add a pound of ground turkey. Break the turkey down as much as you can to make things easier for yourself later. We don't want meatballs here. While that happens, slice and dice a stick of celery. I'm using two halves because I was down to the core of my celery stock. Never waste food just because it doesn't look pretty. Dice two more cloves of garlic and a large shallot. When the turkey's done, take it out while leaving all the juice in the pan. Add in your garlic, celery, and shallot, and a teaspoon of salt, unshown. Cook until soft, then add two cups of croutons and stir until all the liquid is absorbed. Add in some warm water and repeat. Two cups of croutons could need up to a cup of water. Add slowly and let it absorb until you get the right consistency. So it's important when you're picking out your potatoes to get one that's the right size to hold all the stuffing, but without being too big that you can't get it down in one bite. But you also want something that's nice and round, maybe a little bit oval. Try to stay away from anything sort of kidney bean shaped like this, but you can't win them all. And people start to look funny at you if you dig through the potato bin for too long. So if you buy a couple bags of minis and you end up with a couple of duds, you could just have roast potatoes for dinner one night. Cut the potatoes in half. We're looking for lines that'll give us a nice bowl shape and hopefully lay flat easily. The worst part is stabbing them all over with a fork. If you don't perforate the skins, they might explode while cooking and you'll have to start over. Cover them with water and boil off until a fork can easily slide through, usually about 20 minutes. Transfer to a plate and let them cool off. Maybe don't use a spoon that'll slice through the skins. When the potatoes are cool enough to pick up, dig the core out with a small spoon and set aside. Keep the discarded core separate. Repeat. Drop them in a pot of hot oil and fry until golden brown and crunchy. Keep an eye on them cause they can burn fast. Afterwards, you're free to fry up the leftovers for your own treat. Showtime. Set your potato. Add the turkey, top with stuffing, garnish with a cranberry or two, and repeat. Remember, you can't win them all. So when you're plating this, you can use any leftover herbs to sort of scatter in and around. The aroma will help the presentation when you take it around at a party, and it'll also make your Instagram pictures pop. Now you'll notice that the potatoes are the limiting factor in this recipe. You can make a whole bunch of these with the amount of stuffing and cranberry sauce that you have left over. But the good news is, any leftovers you have, you can just combine in a bowl, sprinkle on some, sprinkle on your crispy potato bits, and you're good to go for some turkey-themed meal prep for the week. Cranberry sauce, you could just put on the dinner table. It's fantastic cranberry sauce. So as far as the bites go, if you did everything properly, you should have some crispy potato at the bottom, some buttery, herbaceous turkey in the middle. You should have your very savory stuffing on top, and then the bite of the cranberry right on the top. The flavors are intense enough that you could make out what everything is in that one bite, and they just mesh together so well for that turkey dinner presentation, you should be ready to go and press for your party. As far as lessons learned, this cranberry sauce is authentic cranberry sauce. You can add a little bit more sugar if you want. My recipe cuts the sugar in half because I like it a little bit more on the tart side, but you could make as much of this as you want and put it out on the table. It's authentic cranberry sauce. 
For the turkey, the seasoning that we used is the same seasoning that I would use to prep a whole bird if I were doing a roast on my own. So if you are in charge of the main dish, you could follow that recipe for a fantastic bird every time. The stuffing recipe carries over, but instead of using the leftover juices from frying up some ground turkey, you would just use the drippings coming out of the roast pan. And instead of mashed potatoes, try making french fries. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.